Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your questions. Shaq is here with us in the studio. Ali and Jules as well. Shaq, have you saying you've been deflating footballs all week? Yes, yes, I have. Why is that a tiring thing to do? Shall we just put the pin in the... Uh, it's been hot. <laughs> Dad. Where have you been doing it? Outside, Dad. Why don't you do it in your house? It's just easier outside, Dad. Well, clearly not, because it's hot. <laughs> Are you sitting on the balls? Yeah, I'm how, what, standing on the balls. What's your, oh. your technique? How many have you deflated? Um, 150 there, boss. Very oh. good. Very good, Shaq. This is for, the, obviously, the charity yeah. work where you yes. send... I send them. So I'll send them back to Trinidad. Oh. Dr. Shaka hits yeah, up, hey, everyone. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Only on this show can you be mocked for charity yeah. work. <laughs> You played a few football. You played a few football. Oh, I'll there, do we it every time. there we are. Can people send you footballs? <laughs> the shorts? Yes, there you go. Please, please send please me do. footballs. Send them, send them, please them please Send them deflated. <laughs> Shaka Hislop, USA. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't yeah. players willing to move to Manchester United just like they're willing to move to Barcelona with lower wages, given Manchester United were one of the biggest clubs in the world as well when they grew up? Yeah, Jules, why does no one go to United? I'm not sure if that's true. I still think that it's one of the biggest clubs in the world. Like, like Ten Hag, why did Ten Hag go then? He didn't have to go. I still think that this club appealed to some players, appealed to some manager. It's a tough time, of course it is, but it's also, I think you can also feel like you want to be part of the rebuilding project. And if you manage to take this club back to the top, it's, it's very rewarding. I, you know, I don't know, I can understand why right now it doesn't look like that. But I still want to believe that they can still attract players, that players still want to play at Old Trafford, such a historical club, and that, and that they might still want to be part of that. Yeah, how much would a club's history affect your decision to go there or not? Um, in, in, in today's game, I think a lot of the world's best talent, which you would normally associate with Manchester United, want to play Champions League football. Right. I, I think not that's, being, that's the appeal. Yeah, not being in the Champions League affects affects a lot of players' decisions in, in today's game. We we are what 12 months removed from Ronaldo choosing Manchester United over Manchester City, but now you have now they are chasing or supposed to be chasing players where other clubs are interested, those other clubs will be competing in the Champions League, Manchester United are not. So therefore, it, it, it's, a, it's a tougher decision, it's a tougher sell to, to those players. If you, if you, grow, you grew up, you know, supporting Barcelona, huh? and they come in for you, uh -huh. but they're currently sitting 10th in the table, uh -huh. Getafe, meanwhile, uh -huh. are in the Champions League, they've got a chance to make a really good run. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your decision? But it depends on where I am in my career. If I am a top tier talent, then I'm... What are you laughing at, Shaq? That was unnecessary, Shaq. This was a hypothetical. I was answering a hypothetical question. I was just, yo, if I'm a top tier talent, I was just, it's a big if. Yes. I was just yes. admiring the size yeah. of your if. Yes. <laughs> if I'm a top tier talent, and I'm, I'm at top, top of the crest of my career, I don't think that the sentimental value of my relationship with Barcelona would play a right. role. Uh, I wouldn't sacrifice the uh, projection and the trajectory of my career because of the sentimental connection. I, I, and, and I think that's where clubs need to be very honest with themselves and objective with themselves and that what is the profile of player that we can go after? Because in my opinion, no top tier talent wants to be part of a rebuild. Right. If you are at the best of your career and you are among the best in the world, you're not going in the rebuild. Somebody else is. Don't live in Itafe, live in a nicer bit of Madrid. <laughs> All right. Who's the best player? Very hypothetical question. <laughs> Who's the best player outside the top six jewels in the Premier League? And is it still Cristiano Ronaldo? <laughs> oh, 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 that's me. oh, dear Ronnie. Um, I don't know, I would say Bruno Guimaraes has a, has a mm. good, I, I think he would be a good shout because I think he showed the second part of last season, Sonny towards the end of the season with Newcastle, how good he was. Um, I would have said someone like Christian Eriksen, but now he's part of the top six club. He's moved there. I, I would have said Medi Pisuma, who also moved to a top six club. So eventually mm. those really, really good players yeah. always end up going to a top six club. But I would say Bruno Guimaraes for now, because I think very, very soon he will move to a top six club. 
There we go. Mm -hmm. I'll say Declan Rice. So what, what about Newcastle? Finish in the top six. What, what? Is, what does Jules mean by very soon Bruno Guimaraes will move to a top six club? Well, a Newcastle finishing top... You didn't have them in their top six this season. Yes, exactly. Your predictions. So, so don't your... start going on your I or. I didn't want to jinx them, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Pretending you're a big Newcastle <laughs> fan. I didn't want to <laughs> jinx them, that's all. Jack, let's be honest. You didn't even remember that you put together a top six list. <laughs> <As he had. laughs> I was thinking about who the hell was about top six. Okay. I remember. Let's go fullbacks, Ali. Okay, let's go fullbacks. Start, bench, sell. Ooh. Philip Lahn, Roberto Carlos, Danny Alves. Oh, man. Oh, 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 oh. bench, sell. Ooh, what? Oh, what? Uh, I'm gonna start Philip Lamb. <gasps> wow. I'm gonna bench Danny Alves and I'm gonna sell Roberto Carlos. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. I, I know, it hurts. Where are you going with this list, Jules? I think I'll agree with Ali. I'm that close of going yeah. Daniel Alves first and Philip Lam on the bench. So start Daniel Alves, Lam on the bench, and then Sir Roberto Carlos. But I, I'll go with Ali. I just think that Philip Lam, just just for everything, is just you know magnificent. So I'll start him. No, I, I I agree in that I'll sell Roberto Carlos. But I am leaning to start Daniel Vez. Ahead of but, but as Drew says, it is really, really close. Roberto Carlos has got the biggest calves you've ever seen. So when I when he's gonna realize like, like literally they're bigger than my head. <laughs> Have you seen his calves? He played against <laughs> Yes, I've seen his calves, but I, I'm not quite <laughs> sure that that played a role in the decision. I, I just is, I just saw people might like a little insight. It's really a, odd turn. Roberto no, they're the biggest calves you'll ever see in your lives, aren't they? I'll tell you a quick story about Roberto Carlos. So we're playing Brazil in Belém do Pará in, uh, in Brazil, World Cup qualifier, right? And we're looking good. We're knocking the ball around. Right, oh. This is Getafe Alley. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, uh, eventually Brazil actually picked up the pace and right. we were done, but. It's after three minutes. Yes. <laughs> But we're moving three, around and, and we're defending well, well and then we shift everybody over and we think okay we've done everything that we were asked to do in our preparation and roberto carlos would not here's the sideline he has a defender in front of him his only option you would have thought okay he's going to turn and play it to the center back yeah without taking a step hits a, like a 65 yard ball across the field to Cafu going on the right hand side. He crosses the ball, they're scoring the goal and we're like, what? But, but we were under control. <laughs> we had him. <laughs> we had him right where we wanted him. It was ready to go. He's got really big calves, you know? Yeah, yeah. Roberto yeah, Kai. Apparently. Shaka, have I told you how big his calves are? <laughs> I think you all got caught in marrying his calves. Yes. <laughs> what move, what big calves you oh. have, Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> Jules, any truth to the rumours of Liverpool, Real Madrid or PSG being interested in acquiring Jude Bellingham before the transfer window ends? What's the valuation that Dortmund put for Bellingham? No, not this summer, no. I think that some, next summer there might be a, a big battle. I think Real Madrid um, would be included in that, well, in that list as well because I think in their mind this could be a, a target very, very soon. We know that Liverpool are really keen and will at some point will have to rebuild the midfield or certainly to to change a little bit the midfield. So I think he will come into that. For PSG, I'm not so sure, but we're talking easily now over the 120 million euros for Jude Bellingham. If he continues again, that progression that we've seen in the last two seasons, and if he has another positive season with Dortmund, I think we're looking at, yeah, 120 minimum. Wow. We'll go up to 150 for someone of his age and of the talent. And if he has a good World Cup with England, yeah, the price will even go higher. What about if Barcelona has six more levels? Oh, oh, pull the levers. They pull the tenth <laughs> level. <laughs> oh. You go, you go lever. I go lever. Well, where do you go? I'm gonna say lever. You lever as well. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Jules, do you know who Gilbert Teamer is? Always ridiculing my, pr my pronunciations, that's what it is. Spicy verse. You're ready, you're ready to go at me there. Thanks, Ali. Uh, Jules, any idea who Gilbert Teamer is? Gilbert who? Teamer. No. 
Are you sure it's Sorry. not your burner account? Because they write in, for the boys, given that PSG appear to be firing on all cylinders, how far do you think they'll make it in the Champions League, given their current <laughs> form? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 that is it's a lot of burner, burner account. There it is, uh, most definitely. All we need is an Arsenal right, let's, mention Let's start off with the objective opinions. Was he, okay, what was your question? Oh, oh, PSG, yeah. how far are they going? In what, Champions League? Yes. Well, same, same again. Bottling it in the quarterfinals. Yeah. <laughs> Cavs TV on here shouting. Yeah, shouting. Choking. They got a bottle. It. Choking. Yeah. Choking everywhere. Why, why, why are you making that face, little Shaq? <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's just, very expressive. That's just a face of God. That's just Ali. Face of God. They'll get one step further. Semi-final and then choke. Yes. Right. <laughs> Julian Laurent. They go oh. all the way. Where's the final? Uh, in Paris. Where, where, not in Paris. Not in Paris. Not anymore. Not ever again. Uh, where is I the final? Anywhere. Machine? I'll walk there. If they find the final, I'll, I'll cycle there. Even. George, you got a tattoo. I've never seen your tattoo oh, before. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Mrs. L. What is it? Name. What's it say? Gab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, he wishes probably. Yeah. What, no, what, what does it say? Oh, it says Kate for Mrs. Lawrence. Oh, phew. Oh. phew oh. At least it isn't Mrs. Laurent. Oh, oh. Not yeah. X, not Kate. No, oh, oh. no, not. <laughs> I say nothing. I barely speak the language. Uh, uh, Jules, where is Icardi? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think at the Nobu Hotel in Ibiza. The last time I... Oh, I yes. Him, San Antonio. Yeah, because uh, you know, he's obviously... You know, he's a stay-at-home dad now. Uh, he's not right. any more football player, so he's not in my books. Uh, and I think he had a few days off, so he decided to go uh, with Wanda, of course, and the girls to Ibiza. Oh, uh, yeah, to a very nice hotel. So, I mean, good for him. A bit of sunbathing, you know, getting his tan done. Nice food, you know, nice. all of that, it's a good life. Did you do Ibiza in your younger days? No, I didn't. <laughs> you should have seen 18 year old Dan in Ibiza. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh <wait. laughs> Crossed tips, cross the tips. <laughs> just, just trying to get my calves like Roberto Carlos. <laughs> <That's laughs> Foam a, parties. A scary oh goal. man. Final question start, bench, or sell? Okay, Jules. Rui Costa, Riccone, Totti. Mm. It's quite a mix. Mm. Wow. Uh, as much as I love Rikel May, I, the lack of pace would frustrate me too much. Uh, I will go for Toti. I start Toti. I bench with Costa. And really, really against my will, I would wow. say Rikel what do you mean, against his will? He's the one making the decisions. Yeah, yes, no. <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean. Uh, I would start Totti, bench Riquelme, sell Rui Costa. I'm with Ali. That is it. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.